This is the internal assembly. Place the axle assembly with the planet cage assembly already installed with the right side facing up. Then using some Castrol CLS grease, apply a little to the axle and install the shift actuator with the two shorter pegs facing down, engaging the holes. Then the clutch. Apply some CLS00 grease to the clutch slide ring and install the clutch facing down. Some more grease inside the clutch. Then the gear ring and some more of the CLS00 grease on the teeth of the gear ring. Next is the drag spring. Note there is a notch on one side of the drag spring that will fit over this peg on the gear ring. Put a little bit of CLS00 grease on the inside of the drag spring and position the notch over the pegs and the two rectangular holes will fit over the gear ring poles. Then is the ball ring. Apply some CLS00 grease to the ratchets of the ball ring and slide it down over the drag spring. And you should be able to rotate it and feel it engaging the poles. Then Castrol LMX grease for the bearings and the ball cup and the large ball cage assembly. Take the driver a little bit of Castrol CLS00 grease. Inside the driver there's a shoulder down inside where the large end of the spring will sit. Put the small end of the clutch spring into the driver and pull and rotate a little bit until it just seats down there. Make sure that it rotates freely and is symmetrical. Then drop some Castrol LMX grease into the bearing race on the driver. Insert the small bearing cage assembly with a little bit of Castrol CLS00 grease inside the clutch again. And the clutch spring will sit into the clutch and a little bit more of the CLS grease on the poles of the driver. Rotate counterclockwise and hold the driver down. Some more LMX grease on the bearings and the right hand cone. You'll notice there are two grooves on each side with two notches in the middle. It's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which way it goes. And then the 3.2 millimeter nut to hold the cone in place. And tighten the lock nut to 8.5 newton meters. Then Next is the cable drum. You'll notice four holes. Two of the holes have a V on them, which stands for vertical dropouts. The other two holes are for standard horizontal dropouts or reversed track end style dropouts. In this example, we're going to use the V for vertical. Align the V holes onto the shift actuator pins. 
And then the next piece is called the cone locator. And there's a red dot here on the very top of it. Position that red dot closest to the cable hook. So you'll notice this red dot is closest to the cable hook. It will fit the other way, but then this red dot will be too far away. And there's a 6.4 millimeter lock nut. And you can use this cable spinner tool. It just speeds up the process. And tighten the lock nut to 8.5 Newton meters. Next, install the fulcrum lever. You'll notice there's three arrows corresponding to the different types of dropouts. R is for reversed or track style dropouts. S is for standard or forward facing horizontal dropouts. And V is for vertical. In this example, we're using V. There's a red dot on the very top of the cone locator. Align the corresponding arrow with the red dot. And you'll see the arrow and the red dot line up. And then there's a C-clip to hold the fulcrum, fulcrum lever on. And then you're done.